Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video I'm going to talk about the Google Cloud Professional Architect exam, how to study for it and, and what to look out for when you're taking the exam. Uh, this will be pretty much from my experience. Uh, the, you could probably find a whole bunch of material on how to prep and how to study for this but I'm going to explain what worked for me, uh, not only getting it once as you can see here but also getting it again. Uh, you, if you don't understand you get uh, a bit of uh, merch or swag or what do you want to call it each time you uh, sit your exam so i've recertified um once uh, and this was my first time getting it uh, so yeah i'm going to explain the ways that have worked for me uh, to get this exam um, and also recertify it because when you re go to recertify for this exam you actually have to sit the whole thing again you don't get some um, nice thing you can do at home, you have to go to a testing center or have a proper proctored course to get it again. So yeah, I'm going to explain what works for me and hopefully we can help you. Right, so here I am on the Google Cloud page. I'll have a link in the description for this for the Professional Cloud Architect exam. This is a pretty common place that most people will come to when you're looking to grab a certification uh, just to get an idea of what to expect from it. So as I said before, this is the architect exam. So this will cover many parts of a cloud environment. Uh, not, not just the, the basic stuff, but you get into nitty gritty stuff of going into like Kubernetes commands, uh, solving case studies and all of this. So let me just start from the start and uh, we'll go from there. The professional cloud architect is definitely again, a professional level certification. It's If it's something you don't have cloud experience and you're looking to get into the cloud, um, by all means, you could start here if you want. There would be a bit more study to do and a bit a lot to wrap your head around uh, where there are the other courses uh, below this that you could start to try just to get your, um, your feet on the ground in the cloud space to understand the fundamentals where this is kind of assuming that you understand those fundamentals and now you're really coming into the architect and the design, the, the best practices around building and deploying uh, cloud services, uh, not just for one case uses, but they will test you based on use cases and business examples in this. So you really need to understand not only how to do it, but why you're doing it. Now, that might all sound scary and whatnot, but trust me, once you understand the criteria of this exam and as soon as you wrap your head around what they're expecting of you and you start studying for it everything just starts to become a bit more clearer so let's just start going over this so as you can see here there's some key points they're talking about um, the things that they're going to assess you on is how to design and plan a cloud solution architecture design for security and compliance so that's like your best practice stuff manage implementations of cloud architecture provisioning cloud um, solution infrastructure you can read the rest so they're just testing you on the really best practice why you're doing it not not just how to do it but why and they will ask you that a lot because when it comes down to the why part there's many ways to do this right um if if someone wanted um you know if, if someone wanted a vm right there's a whole bunch of ways you can deploy the VM, right? You can give them a VM, but this really starts to ask why. What are they going to use the virtual machine for? What size is it going to be? What security does it need? Is there going to be medical data on it? If there is medical data on it, what compliance do we have to go by? You really start asking, it really starts asking you those questions, why are you doing it? And I want you to understand why you're doing it. Now, enough about just the key points, but... Um, here you can see just the basic stuff of uh, you can go into a testing center or do it at home if there's no testing centers around you. Uh, but there's also the exam guide. So this is what I do as I will come to this page and I'm not, not just the Google certs, I've got my Terraform certs and the Azure certification as well. And this is my go-to way every time. I will come to the page and I will look at the overview and try find a guide. So I'll click on this. And here you can see that now I've come into a guide and it will start to tell me about the, the exam and what's kind of going to be in it. So this exam, like I mentioned before, it has case studies and you need to understand all, all four of these case studies, the problem they're having and the solution that you're going to put in to fix that problem. And they will quiz you 
you might not necessarily get all four in your exam. Um, I think in my last one, uh, I think I got a couple, um, like not all four, but I think I got one or two of them. I'm not, I can't fully remember. I also can't go into specifics about this because when you sit your exam, you sign a NDA that you will not disclose what you had completed in your exam based on like questions and stuff. So uh, even if I could remember, I couldn't specifically say, but trust me, um, it's not really giving it away anyway. Uh, because you really need to understand these, the reasoning why to pass this exam anyways. I don't think you could just um, study word for word answers. Uh, it just won't help you here. So this is a great page to come to to understand. So each one of these, you could click on each one. So let's say we wanted to look up Mount Kirk Games, their case study. You can click here. And now you can read the PDF. So... Each one of these case studies will give you a company overview, the solution concept of what they're wanting, anything they have existing, requirements. The requirements here are a big critical piece that you need to know. So support multiple regions. Let's just pick that one out for now. Why is that a big thing? They will ask you in this question, we were going to have a storage bucket. Uh, should we make it multiple multi-region or should we just have it local or whatever? I'm just using basic examples, but you have to understand when you get a question and the question is asking you, can this be local or should it be multi-region or should, um, you know, should we allow um, deployments into just one region? You have to remember, oh, should, can we just have it locally or do we have to allow other regions? And this will, if you remember, you will, like, ah, okay, no, Mount Kirk games require multiple regions. So you've got that for your questions that as soon as they ask you, because generally, if you remember the key points, the key requirements of each business and you, when you get a question, you can pretty much cut 50% of the answer straight away because two of them will probably be like not quite right and then you can just do the process of elimination. Um, and I'm not just talking about the Google certification here. That's kind of the way with m most certifications is that they chuck in maybe a few odd ones and this one that will, is in there to try to trip you up and then the other is the correct one. Um, so you really need to just make sure you understand the, the answer and the business requirements. Technical requirements are the same. And then you've just got a statement of um, what they're doing, why they're doing it, and what they hope, uh, hope to solve. So this is the exact same structure for all of the case studies. And you, they're not huge, but you do need to understand the technical and the business requirements, why and how they're wanting to go about it. Okay, so now that we've looked at the case studies, we can start to come down and start figuring out what they're really expecting of you in the exam and what you need to study up on. So here, there's a whole bunch of sections where it's saying, hey, look, we here's the business use cases that you need to understand. Um, how do you do cost optimization? You can read the rest. So it tells you pretty much every section of what you need to understand. Now, this all seems like a lot, okay? And I won't lie, it is a lot. And... There's a lot to prep for, but the, again, this is a professional exam. But the key point is that I would suggest is one, the getting yourself a trial uh, account in Google Cloud uh, where they give you some credit and you can play around is the best place to go first. Get yourself a trial account, have a play around, get familiar with the environment and how things work. Okay. And then on top of that, have a go at the practice questions um, pretty much to set your initial bar uh, to set your initial bar to understand how well you are doing now uh, with how you understand Google Cloud and then start prepping on these questions uh, and I will give you some links to uh, some practice um, some courses as well and some places that you can go to study for this exam um, but yeah the, the practice the practice questions are the best way to start to get a feel for how well you're doing. Right, so I've just come to the practice questions. I'll leave in a link in the description where you can find these. Uh, but here it's pretty straightforward and these are questions that is what will be in your actual exam. So not exactly, but they will prep you very well because uh, these are the official Google practice quest questions. And these will get, help you understand what to expect from the exam. So as you can see here, straight away at the top, it says for this, refer to the EHR healthcare case study. Now, in your exam, you will be given a 
the case studies but trust me if you haven't already prepped on them and you have to rely on reading them uh properly like top to bottom in your actual exam you'll probably run out of time you have to at least understand uh these case studies well enough to when you're getting a question you just go oh what was that specific part again then you can use the case study for that that's what they're good for but if you're using the case study to just understand the business requirements and everything from start to bottom it's not gonna it's not gonna go well so make sure you at least understand those case studies and here you can see the questions you can get so um i'm not going to read all of this but this is a great way for you to come test so you can just come in here and then you can go next into the next question and then again another EHR healthcare case study. And here they're asking you about, um, let's actually read this one. EHR wants to connect one of their data centers to Google Cloud. The data center is in a remote location over 100 kilometers from Google owned point of presence. They can't afford new hardware, but their existing firewall can accommodate future throughput growth. They are also shared, they also shared these data points. So servers uh, in there, blah, blah, blah. You need to recommend a connectivity option. What would you recommend? Now, this is where you need to understand not if something will work, okay? Now, you'll get questions where multiple solutions will probably work, but is that the one that was for their business requirement for that customer? That's the key point here, the business requirements for them. Because you can go in and, uh, in the real world and a customer's going to go, hey, can you do this for me? And there's going to be five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 whatever ways to do it but is this the best way to do it um sorry is the way you're you're planning on doing it the best way to do it and that's and not just the best way from a technical point of view but for the business requirements point of view as well so you always have to keep that in mind the business requirements for the case study comes first for this so talking about the practice questions what's going to be in the exam so how do you actually prepare for the certific certification now again i'm only speaking from my experience but this is uh, i use wiz labs um, a lot for understanding exam itself uh, they will talk you through uh each section so you know how in the exam they had the section breakdown section one section two such and such they talk you through all of that and what solution is best fit and why so you actually understand the stuff uh, but also I would recommend when they're talking through that stuff, actually having the portal open on a second screen or maybe just switching between the two and playing around for yourself as well to understand actually how that actually worked together. Um, so I use WizLabs in tandem with actually real use cases. Like, and when I say real use cases, I mean me going into the Google Cloud portal myself and testing it as well. Uh, so that was a great way for me to learn. So if we come down and we can see popular courses, I will go under Google Cloud certifications and then you've got the Google Cloud Professional Cloud Architect. So if I explore that now, right, so if we come here, uh, we can get an idea of what they offer. So the best thing about this is that they generally always have deals on. So you can see on the right here, $44 and you get practice tests, which are really good. Um, and they're a great way to just to prep you uh, and the test your knowledge uh, and see if you're ready for the exam. They give you online courses and hands-on labs. The hands-on labs part is new. I never had that. So you actually get to do that key point, those key uh, hands-on experience parts that really help solidify the knowledge in your head, right? Rather than just reading about it. Uh, so here you can see 41 video lectures, 300 plus Google uh, questions. The 300 Google questions is great. I, 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 I don't think I actually um, again, I don't think I got the hands on labs or anything, but I really used to practice tests a lot to test, uh, how I was, um, and they will take you through everything. Uh, so yeah, again, I I'm not like sponsored or anything by Wiz Labs. It's just what I use. Uh, they're just a great tool uh, for me when I'm prepping for, um, certifications. So if we just come down, we can see what's included in this course. So you've got um, the general introduction. They go through compute, database, networking, operations, um, AI, machine learning, big data, and the case studies. They will tell you the case studies, um, explain it, and explain the business requirements and what technically is the best solution for them. Um, so that really will help. So that is pretty much what how I 
prep for, again, uh, not only the Google Cloud certification, but most of my certifications. It's a matter of going onto the website, checking the exam guide, looking at some sample questions, just getting an idea of what they're after, and then looking for a, a course, an online course. And in this case, WizLabs uh, has been really good. Now, I will say when I was studying for my Terraform course, WizLabs was terrible. Uh, the questions I had weren't right. They were half well written and stuff like that. I don't know how that works. Um, but when it came to the Azure and the Google Cloud stuff, it's spot on and it's very professionally written uh, and their courses are really good. So I can definitely vouch for those ones. Uh, others I couldn't vouch on, but yeah, the Google Cloud uh, certification, uh, the architect one is really good there. Uh, so yeah, just to sum it up, go to the front page for the Google Cloud Architect um, page, look at the course overview, uh, start playing around with some sample questions to get you a baseline of how well you are doing, and then start prepping for the course using um, the online courses on Liz Labs. Um, or you, again, you don't have to pay for a course if you can't, um, you don't want to, or you can't afford it, or whatever reason. You can look at what the um, exam is requesting in the exam guide and then just start playing with that and reading up the white papers and studying it uh, yourself using the Google Cloud portal and stuff like that. It's a bit harder that way, but if you're up for a challenge, go for it. Uh, and then once you've done those courses, smash and repeat those uh, the, the questions, the exam uh, test questions, and keep doing them until you're getting like 90s, uh, like 90% plus. Now, Google don't make the pass rate for these uh, certifications public, so you don't know how much you need pass. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> so just aim for, yeah, 90s to 95s. Just aim to ace the exam, uh, and you'll do sweet. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. But that's pretty much all for this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments below and I'm more than happy to help out. But uh, in saying that, uh, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.